Russian peacekeeping contingent leaving the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan may be sent to Ukraine. As it is known, the Russian peacekeeping contingent has started to leave the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan. Yulian Robka, a military analyst of the Build publication, commented on the issue. According to him, there is some information that this contingent can be sent to the Ukrainian front. The total number of the contingent is about 2,000 military personnel. Russian peacekeepers are armed with dozens of new BTR-82A armoured personnel carriers, which will be useful on the front where there is a severe shortage of Russian armoured vehicles. Azerbaijan's Defence Minister, Colonel General Zakir Hasanov, has issued relevant instructions related to the provision of necessary technical support for the transportation of personnel, ammunition and military equipment of the Russian peacekeeping contingent temporarily stationed in the country's Karabakh region and currently leaving the country. The instructions were issued at an official meeting held at the headquarters of the Azerbaijani Land Forces. The Russian peacekeeping contingent was supposed to be deployed in Nagorno-Karabakh until November 10, 2025. The Russian contingent was temporarily deployed there following a trilateral statement signed on November 10, 2020 between the leaders of Azerbaijan, Russia and Armenia. The size of the Russian contingent was limited to 1,960 soldiers, 90 armoured personnel carriers, 380 vehicles and special equipment, 4 Mi-8 and 4 Mi-24 helicopters of the Russian Aerospace Forces and 7 UAVs. Deployed in Karabakh in November 2020, the Russian peacekeepers were initially tasked with protecting the Armenian population following the cessation of military hostilities in the region. However, this mission encountered unforeseen challenges when, between September the 25th and October the 3rd, 2023, there was a mass exodus of the Armenian population from the area. The second factor involves more intricate geopolitical dynamics, including the intent of the Russian government to influence Armenian domestic politics. Russia aims to undermine Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, who is inclined towards closer ties with Western countries, a stance perceived by the Kremlin as a threat. Concurrently, an analysis of Azerbaijan's foreign policy under President Ilham Aliyev highlights his efforts to maintain balanced relations with Russia. This strategy seeks to preserve stability and foster beneficial economic and military partnerships. The U.S. House of Representatives has passed a bill to provide additional aid to Ukraine after months of delay. The volume of the package is $60.84 billion. Some $23.2 billion of the military aid will be used to replenish U.S. weapon stockpiles, $11.3 billion are allocated for current U.S. military operations in the region. Another $13.8 billion will be used for the purchase of weapons systems, defense products, and defense services. Some $26 million are for supervision of the assistance provided. The bill requires partners and allies to pay a fair share based on mandatory cost comparisons. It also raises financial limits on some presidential spending cutting powers. The bill will be sent to the Senate for final decision and then to President Joe Biden for ratification. Former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence, if Ukraine loses, U.S. military will have to go to war with Putin. Former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence believes that American troops will have no choice but to fight Russian invaders in Europe if Vladimir Putin defeats Ukraine. He stated this at an event hosted by the German Marshall Fund of the United States, a think tank. Pence called on the U.S. Congress to approve additional funding for military aid to Ukraine. If Putin defeats Ukraine, I have no doubt in my mind the time would come that he would cross the border into Europe, that our men and women in uniform would have to fight, Pence said. According to him, the Americans will have to fight under Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, under which an attack on one member is an attack on all. And I think what the American people will witness here is nothing short of moral courage here. Speaker Mike Johnson has decided to do what he believes is right and trust the American people with the outcome in this moment. And I commend him for that, Pence said. Pence's comments come as the House fights over whether to advance a foreign aid package that would provide funding for Ukraine. 
House Speaker Mike Johnson, who has been facing significant pressure from GOP hardliners, has said he will stick with his plan to put the series of foreign aid bills on the floor. Pence also cautioned that a Russian victory would set into motion a domino effect that would embolden authoritarian regimes, suggesting that China would then move toward invading Taiwan. Now's a moment where the United States of America needs to square our shoulders. We need to recognize we are the leader of the free world. And we need to step into this moment, send a deafening message, not just to Russia and Vladimir Putin, Jake, but also renew our support to our cherished ally Israel, support Taiwan and also send a very clear message to the mullahs in Tehran and frankly to President Xi in Beijing that America is going to stand firm for freedom, he said.